Hi there. Thank you for joining me. I'm Tracy. I'm an upcycler and I love to take thrifted items, pre-owned items and turn them into fun, one-of-a-kind pieces, clothes, purses, accessories. And today I'm doing all three of these little pouch purses, amulet bags, and they have little pockets and they're lined and they have fun jewelry and fringes and things like that. So what can you put in a bag so small? Well, if you want to be practical, you could do like credit cards or lipstick or little keys. But if you want to be sentimental, you could do a letter that means something to you, a letter you write to yourself. You could put some healing crystals in there, sage, um, a photograph of someone important, or just a rosary, something that's special to you. Now, these make wonderful gifts or to make and sell. And uh, when I make these, I'm making all three. I'm starting with this one and I get very detailed in all the sewing and things, but I get less and less detailed as far as the basic construction because they're all the same pattern. They're all constructed the same way with just a little bit of a difference in some of them. So, let's get rolling first one i'm going to make is going to be made out of this pillow sham that i thrifted it's kind of a heavier decorator fabric okay so the first thing i did was make a pattern four and a half inches tall by three and a half inches wide and then i traced and cut out two rectangles out of that pillow sham fabric i am going to make some genuine suede green fringe now this is real leather it's from a jacket from Goodwill, and when I get those home, I wash them in cold water in my washer, and I dry them. Now, it works perfectly fine for crafts that may shrink a little bit, may get a little water spot here and there. Don't do this if it's a jacket you want to wear. That's only for crafts. Okay, I cut a piece of suede five and a half by two and three quarter. Now, I'm going to lay it down on my cutting mat and take my straight edge and my roller cutter and I'm just going to make some fringe now since this is a tiny little bag I'm only going to make my fringe about eighth of an inch wide and I am going to cut that to between about quarter of an inch to half an inch I'm leaving it attached at the top and I will just cut that all the way till I have made fringe out of the whole piece. Now, out of the two rectangles, I'm going to choose which I want to be my front side and it will be this one. And I will take that fringe and I will sew it to the bottom. I will lay it on top of the fabric, center it down at the bottom, and I will use an eighth of an inch seam allowance on all of these and a straight stitch. So I will just sew right along the bottom here. Now I'm going to take this scalloped goldish trim and I'm just going to lay it diagonal in the corner and I will take the straight stitch sew across right here come down at the bottom of this band and sew across there that's what that looks like now I'm just going to trim that now I want my fringe to come to a point so I'm just going to angle this up and cut the sides until it comes to a point. Now this doesn't have to be perfect. I don't do any measuring here. Now I want to play with some jewelry and put some cute jewelry pieces down the center. And what I need, I have this kit. It's a bunch of jump rings, jewelry making jump rings, assorted shapes and colors, and they each have a little split 
in which to open them up. And then I have two jewelry making pliers and I have a wire cutter. This isn't a matching set, but I'll put all this um, in a link in my description. Okay, so here are two that I put together a long time ago. I made earrings out of them, but I want one more. So this little earring is not long enough. It's too short. So I want to make it longer, and what I'll do is snip off that hook, the earring hook, where it goes into the ear. I don't need that. And then I'll take sort of a medium gold colored ring, and I'm just going to open that up and slide one end of the earring in there. And then one end of a little chain that I used to wire cutters and cut off necklace. And I'll slip one end in there. And then I just close it up. Now I twist these from side to side when I open it and close them. Not like this, but more like this. Okay, so that chain that I added to this earring at the top has a big ring. I opened that up and I'm going to add these two pieces. Now, these are really fun to put together just with jewelry remnants, kind of like a little puzzle, but you don't have to do that. You could just use necklace pieces, clip them off where you want them. So I'm just going to add these to that little ring, big ring and close them back up. And that's what I have. Okay, now I have to determine where I want this little collage of charms here. And I think about right there, and how I'll know is I want this brooch in the center, about right there. And I want this brooch to cover, I'll be hand sewing this on just with that one big ring. And I want this brooch to cover that stitching. And so if I put it there, it will. So now I know it's okay to stitch my ring right there. And I'm going to make a little black dot so I don't forget where I wanted it. When I sew jewelry to a purse or anything, I like to match the thread to the jewelry hardware, not to the fabric that I'm sewing it to. So I'm using this gold colored thread and I'm just coming from the back to the front, sort of wrapping the top part of that ring. And I'll do this probably about 10 times to make sure it's nice and secure. Now I'm tying this off in the back just by grabbing a little piece of the fabric, pulling it part way through, except for a little loop here. I like to just wrap it around twice and I'll do that a couple times. But I'm going to leave this attached for my brooch. Okay, this is the brooch I'm going to use. And I am going to sew it, but before I sew it, I always like to pin it because that helps it secure, be secure while I'm sewing it. So I'll get that pinned on. Okay, now that I have that pinned on, I'm just going to stitch it. And I usually like stitching brooches in four spots, top, side, bottom, other side. And my thread and needle are still attached to the back. And you just need to find little gaps and holes in which to sew it. I'm sewing the top one of mine right here. Come through. Go through the hole. And I'll do that a bunch of times so that it's a secure. Probably about, you know, six times or so. Whatever feels secure to you. And then I'll move down and find a little gap 
on the side until I'm finished. Now I want to put the front and the back together. So what I have to do is get all this fringe and jewelry up and out of the way, up towards the top because we won't be sewing the top. And then I will take the back side, put right sides together, lay it right on top, and I will pin all four corners to start with. And once I have all four corners pinned, I will put a pin on the side, bottom, and other side. Nothing across the top. And now I'm just going to sew down the side, across the bottom, and up the other side. Now, the corners that we sewed, I just want to snip it off a little bit close to that line, that stitch, just so that when we poke it out, the corners lay nice and smooth. And now I can turn it right side out. Push those corners out. With, uh, something other than a scissors preferably but I'm careful I use my scissors okay that's what it's looking like so cute now I have it at my ironing board I'm going to turn it over to the back side lay a tea towel over top and give it a good press. Now what I want to do is prep this for the strap and I am using, this looks almost like rawhide but it's not. It says it's nylon and polyurethane. It's an eighth of an inch and it's metallic gold and you use whatever you want. You could use a thin ribbon, just a little yarn braid, whatever. So I cut two pieces Two inches long and now I'm going to fold that in half just like that and I'm going to find the side seam I'll do this sitting at my machine and I will lay it down onto the bag like this and I will sew it across the top at the top of the bag on each side when I set the side seam underneath my needle, I'm going to have to push this down the opposite side so I don't sew it. It's doable. These are tiny. I'm used to working with a lot larger <laughs> purses, but just get that lined up on the side seam. Stitch it across the top. Now I'm going to go back and forth probably like four times because this is a stress point. The chain, the strap will be attached to it. You want to make sure it's durable. Okay, that's what one side looks like. Now I need to do the other side. Now I want to make lining. And I am using this cotton fabric. It's from a shirt. Cotton is the best lining for these. They're easiest to work with, like a quilter's cotton. So I'm just going to take the same pattern we made the purse out of, trace around it twice, and cut them out. Okay, here are my two lining pieces. All I have to do is put them on top of one another, right sides together, and then I won't pin this or anything. I'll just go to my machine. I'll stitch down one side, and then I'll stitch down the other. On this one, we don't stitch across the bottom. Now, my lining piece is open at both ends, and it's still inside out, and I am going to slip it over top of this little purse, and I'm going to make sure my loops are down and not up. And then I'm going to slide it 
all the way down. I want the top of my little purse to line up with the top of the lining here. And now I'll just line up the seams and stick a little pin in it. Once I have that side pinned, I'm going to come along to the other side, line up those seams, stick a pin. Stick a pin on the outside, not the inside, and then put a couple pins in to hold the rest. Now that I have this all pinned, there's the purse fabric all lined up at the top with the lining fabric. I'm going to go to my machine and I'm going to sew all the way around it. And I'll have to push that back side down a little bit so that I don't catch it in my needle. Okay, I did get a tip from a couple viewers. When you're sewing a small space like this, I say to, this is the way I've always done it, but let's see how the other way works. I always say to push this down and sew on the outside. Well, a couple of people have said, sew on the inside, and then you can watch this so that it doesn't get all tangled up. And I'm seeing right away that that seems easier. Okay, yeah. I recommend that sew on the inside okay thank you viewers for the tip learn something new every day okay so now I can pull this lining up and what I need to do since it's still open at the bottom I need to stitch it shut and so I am going to just tuck this inside about half an inch and you can pin yours if you want a lot of times I do this sitting let me find my pins sitting right at my machine it's so easy but um, tuck that in about half an inch and just do a top stitch right across the bottom as close as you can and tuck it in And once you get that lining all tucked in where it needs to be, give it a good press at the top. Okay, so take a tape measure, put it around your net, and put one end on your loop, and just decide how long you want it. I think I want mine about 39 inches. I have two different necklace pieces. And I just clip them off the original necklace with a wire cutter. And together, they total 38 inches. So I wanted 39, but my loops, um, I'm adding a little for that. So I am going to connect these. And what I'll do is on one end here, this has a little wire coming through that's open already. And so I am just going to slip the little loop from this one in there. And then I'm going to take my small rounded little pliers and I'm just going to close that in on itself. And now they're connected. Now I'm going to take two of my larger gold jump rings and I'm going to open one up. And I'm going to slide one end of the necklace through there. And then the other end through that loop. And close it up. Now I need to do the same to this side. Okay, here it is all finished. How cute is that? The chain, the back, 
the lining. Adorable. Okay, on to the next. Okay, for the next one, I'm using a blazer and that same pattern, I'm using it on all three, four and a half by three and a half. Okay, here are the two pieces I cut out for my little bag and this will be my front. And what I want to do is I have this little butterfly, uh, put him right there. This is all jewelry remnants that I'll be sewing on. A little turquoise flower that I'll sew right there. When you, If you're sewing pieces to the front, just make sure you don't sew where that eighth inch seam allowance where you need to sew these together. You want to make sure to keep it inside. And then I have this little heart that came from a charm bracelet and I'll sew that right there. Now I have this sort of fringy metal necklace. I am clipping it with my wire cutters four inches long. Now I want to sew this onto my little purse. And I took a black marker and I marked over half an inch and one and a quarter inch high and I did the same on this side and made a black dot. And now what I'm going to do is take the ends of my necklace, set those on those dots, and stitch here very well, like 10 stitches, and stitch one of the loops onto that dot, about 10, in, or 10 stitches as well. Now I have those all sewn on and I have this little dream catcher that I got in the jewelry department in one of my thrift stores and I'm going to clip that off right there and not use that top part. So I'm going to take these two pieces now and lay them one inch down on the side right here but they have to be facing in and I am going to give that a stitch right there. Okay, I have that all sewn on. Now what I want to do is put the front and the back together just like we did the other little necklace. Put everything up towards the top. Make sure everything's tucked in and away from the sides where we're going to sew. Put right sides together. Pin the four corners and then stick a pin in here. We're not stitching the top. Going quarter of an inch seam allowance. Um, down the side, along the bottom, and up the other side. Okay, now I'm just going to snip off those two bottom corners and turn it right side out. Okay, now I'm going to take it to my ironing board, flip it over, cover it with a tea towel, and give it a good press. Now I want to make this trap, and I am just using a simple little cord. It says it's one point, or point one two inches turquoise, you know, it's just sewing trim basically. And I cut mine at 36 inches. Now I'm going to just sew these on, each end on at the side seam. Open this up and I'm going to lay it down on the side seam facing down onto the purse because I want the end of this to line up with the top and I'm just going to stitch over that and then I'll come around and do it to the opposite side. Okay, my strap is all sewn on. Now I'm going to work 
on the lining. Okay, for the lining, I'm using this sort of velvety, suede feeling uh, jacket. And it's nice because it doesn't have any stretch. And then I cut out my two pieces that we did with the first one. Now I'm just going to lay these together, right sides together, sew down the sides. Going to do this lining just like the other one. My strap needs to come down and lay alongside of the purse down here. And then I just slip this over top. And once I get it all slipped over top, I line up the side seams of the purse fabric with the side seams of the lining, pin it, do the same on the opposite side, pin it all around. Now that I have that all pinned, I'm going to stitch around the top, stitching the purse and the lining fabric all together. Okay. Now pull the lining up over the bag. And then now you just need to stitch the bottom of the lining just like we did on the first one. Now I'm going to tuck the lining in and give it a good press along the top. Okay, here it is all finished. Cute little strap, lightweight and comfy. That's what the back looks like. So fun. Okay, I cut two rectangles out of another blazer and this will be my front. Okay. I have this little piece of lace trim. See that? I cut it three inches long and I want to sew it at the bottom, but the fringe has to be inside the bag. And I'm going to line it up at the very bottom, center it, and stitch right along the bottom here. Okay, now I have this little remnant here with a tassel chain, it's silver. It's about 3.75 inches long. I'm going to sew it down two and a half inches from the top and sew it right there. Then when I'm done sewing this tassel on, I'm going to sew this pretty piece on. It was actually an earring. I clipped off part of the back and pressed it in. And I will sew that right over top of there. And I will use gray thread since my Hardware is silver. Okay, now that I have that all sewn, I'm going to attach the back, just like we did on the other two, right sides together. Sew around the three sides. Okay, I cut two little pieces of brown ribbon at two inches and I'm going to do like we did the first bag and lay them down along the side on the seam and stitch them at the very top. And now I want to make the lining out of this men's checked shirt. Now I'm slipping my lining over the outside of the bag. Okay. Now it's all pinned and ready to sew around the top. Okay, pulling the lining up. And now I'm going to sew that shut. Now I just need to tuck that lining in and give it a press at the top. Okay, so I pieced some chains together. It's kind of a grayish silver kind of a gunmetal and then silver down here this is actually part of a rosary that was broken so i am going to take a little hook or a little jump ring here going to put it through my loop 
and attach the bottom of that chain. Close it up. And now this side super easy because this has a lobster claw clasp and all I have to do is hook that on. Okay. Okay. It's all finished. A nice chain. Beautiful embellishments. Here's what the back looks like. And the lining. How fun, right? I hope that helps get the creative juices flowing. Who knows what remnants you have around your workspace. Most importantly, have fun, and I thank you so, so much for watching.